let's understand what it means by periodic compounding of compound interest. When you see any compound interest problem, typically the rate is mentioned as annual rate in percentage. What does annual rate mean? Annual rate means yearly rate or the rate per year and in percent means per 100 rupees or for every 100 rupees. So the rate is mentioned as annual rate or per year rate and many times interest is charged yearly or interest is calculated yearly but sometimes the interest calculation is done more than once within the year. So to understand when the interest calculation is done, they mention in the problem the compounding period. So let's see what this compounding period is. If the problem says compounded annually, that means the interest is calculated once every year, typically at the end of the year. If they say compounded half yearly or semi-annually, that means the interest is calculated twice a year and if it is mentioned as compounded quarterly quarterly means after every three months that means it is calculated four times a year so what does this word compounded mean compounded means the interest is calculated and added to the principal and the period after which it is done the period after which the interest is compounded or calculated and added to the principal that period is called as conversion period that means when it is compounded annually the conversion period is 12 months when it is compounded semi-annually or half yearly the conversion period is six months let's take an example and see how it actually works Let's consider 100 rupees at 20% per annum compounded annually. This is very easy. You have 100 rupees now and since it is compounded annually, we are going to calculate the interest after one year. So after one year, the interest will be 20 rupees because the rate is 20% and therefore the amount will be 120 rupees which is 100 plus 20. Now what happens if the interest is compounded semi-annually that means half yearly. Again the principal is 100 and the rate is 20% so everything else is the same. The only thing that is changed here is the compounding period. So now we are going to calculate the interest every six months that means twice a year. So we need to split the rate into two parts. Because we are calculating twice a year, we are going to split this 20% into two parts that will be 10% each. So now I have 100 rupees, right? After six months, we will charge 10% interest. Why? Because instead of calculating 20% interest at the end of the year, what we are doing here is that we will calculate 10% after first six months and another 10% after the next six months. So after the first six months, it will be like this. I, which is interest equals 10 and A equals 110. So now the principal is 110 rupees because the amount becomes principal. We know that compounded means added to the principal. So after six months, we are going to compound that means we are going to calculate the interest which is 10 in this case and we are going to add this to the principal. So now the principal is 110. After next 6 months that means after 1 year we are going to calculate 10% on this 110. So 10% 10 of 110 is 11. So after 1 year the interest will be 11 and the amount will be 110 plus 11 which is 121. So at the end of the year the amount in this case is 121 rupees. Now let's go one step further. Let's compound quarterly. So now the problem is this 100 rupees at 20% per annum compounded quarterly. 
the rate is the same, the principal is the same, but we are going to compound it quarterly. Quarterly means after every three months. That means the compounding will be done four times a year. Since we are going to calculate the interest four times a year, let's split the rate into four. So 20% split into four equals 5%. That means instead of calculating 20% interest at the end of the year, we are going to calculate 5% interest after every 3 months. So now you have 100 rupees. What is going to happen after 3 months? We are going to charge 5% on these 100 rupees. That means the interest will be 5 and amount will be 105. That is after 3 months. Now this 105 becomes the principal. So after 6 months when we calculate the interest, we calculate 5% on this 105. So 5% of 105 is 5.25. So the interest after 6 months will be 5.25 or 5 rupees 25 paisa and the amount will be 105 plus 5.25 which will be 110.25 or 110 rupees and 25 paisa. This is the new principle. We are going to calculate interest on this principal at the end of 9 months. So how does it look after 9 months? After 9 months, the interest will be 5% of 110.25 which is 5.51. I am not doing the calculations here. I have already done this calculation before and I am just showing you the numbers. The reason I don't want to do the calculations here is because we want to focus on the concept of periodic compounding and let's not get lost into the calculation so the calculation is already done if you want you can work it out yourself 5% of 110.25 equals 5.51 and therefore the amount is 115.76 this amount will be the principal for the next calculation that calculation will be after one year. So the 5% of 115.76 is 5.79. Again, I have calculated this before. This is the interest. Once you add this interest to 115.76, you get the amount which is 121.55 or 121 rupees and 55 paisa. Now if you look at all these amounts after one year, you can see that if it is compounded annually, the amount is 120. If it is compounded semi-annually, that means after every six months, then it is 121. And if it is compounded quarterly, that means after every three months, then the amount is 121.55. You can see the more compounding you do, the higher the amount is. We did a lot of calculations to understand this and see how it works out. So this is fine to understand. But does the regular compound interest formula work here? You know the formula for calculating amount of compound interest. The formula is A equals P multiplied by 1 plus R over 100 to the power of N. Can I use this formula to calculate all these numbers that I got before? Let's check that out. Now let's consider first the annual compounding. Once we substitute the numbers, it is 100 multiplied by 1 plus 20 over 100 to the power of 1. Because we are calculating at the end of the year and the interest rate is 20%, so it is 20 over 100. This equals 100 multiplied by 120 over 100, which equals 120. So the answer here matches with what we calculated before. The next thing is to calculate semi-annual compounding. In this case, we calculated the interest two times a year. And because we calculated twice in the year, we split the rate into half. So our rate was 10 and the number of calculations, the number of periods were 2. So if we substitute the values, it will look like this. 100 multiplied by 1 plus 10 over 100. I have written the rate as 10 here and to the power of 2 I have written 
n equals to here because we calculated the interest twice. If we solve this, it looks like this 100 multiplied by 110 over 100 multiplied by 110 over 100. And if this is all solved and calculated, you get 11 elevens equals 121. Again, this amount matches with the amount we calculated before. Now let's calculate the quarterly compounding. In this case, we split the rate into 4 because we calculated the interest 4 times. So n is 4. And since we calculated it 4 times, we divided the rate by 4. And 20 divided by 4 equals 5. So our rate was 5. So we get 100 multiplied by 1 plus 5 over 100 to the power of 4. If you solve this, it looks like this. 100 multiplied by 105 over 100 four times. Again, I'm not doing all the calculations here so that we can focus on the concept. If you solve this, you get 121.55. Again, this matches with our previous answer. So now you know that you can use the compound interest formula. All you need to do is you need to make sure that you substitute the correct rate and the correct number of periods. If you can get that right, then the problem is going to be like any other compound interest problem. So let's practice a little bit. Let's try to find the time period and rate for such problems. The first one is here. A sum borrowed for one and a half years at 4% per annum is compounded half yearly. That means it is compounded every six months. And the rate is 4% per annum. That means 4% is a yearly rate. We want to know the rate for every 6 months. So 4 divided by 2 equals 2. That means the rate is going to be 2. 4% per year. That means 2% per 6 months. And the total period is 1.5 years. That means there are going to be 3 compounding periods. We are going to compound the interest every six months. That means there are going to be three periods of compounding within that one and half year. That means n equals three. We are not going to do any calculation here. All we want to see is that whether we can identify what is r and what is n. Let's solve one more problem. A sum borrowed for one and half years at 12% per annum is compounded quarterly. Now here it is compounded quarterly, that means every 3 months and the rate given is per annum, that means for 12 months. So 12% 12 is for 12 months. So for 3 months it is going to be 3, 3%. That means R equals 3. Now the total time period is 1.5 years, but we are going to compound the interest every 3 months. So how many 3 months will fit in? one and a half years, there will be four periods of three months in a year and two in half of the year. So the, totally there will be four plus two, which equals six. That means six periods of three months can fit in one and a half year. Therefore, n equals six. If you can read the problem and understand what is R and what is N, then you can solve periodic compounding problems like any other compound interest problems.